。おはよう。おはよう。Welcome to the So Japanese Podcast, a podcast where we talk about all things uniquely Japanese. We are your hosts. My name is John. My name is Ryusuke. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you.、Um, today's topic, obviously, it's so Japanese.、Mm-hmm. Kimono. Kimono. And、uh, we also have a street level Japanese segment at the end.、Mm-hmm. So, as usual, please stick around.、Mm-hmm. Um, so, kimono.、Mm-hmm. Um, what is it translated to? Kimono? Yeah. Kimono、uh, means ki. Is wearing. Okay. Mono is things. So, thing to wear. Yes. Thing to wear. Yeah. So,、um, kimono、um, was originally worn by like the common class、mm-hmm. or as an undergarment by、mm-hmm. the aristocracy.、Mm-hmm. Um, but from the 16th century, kimono became the principal item. People wore of、mm-hmm. all classes and both sexes.、Mm-hmm. But obviously, when it became normal to wear,、mm-hmm. the samurai, the higher class people,、mm-hmm. royalty、mm-hmm. had to have fancier ones,、yep. which were brighter, fancier dyes, Fancy. yep. Yep.、Um, silk,、mm-hmm. intricate patterns.、Mm-hmm. Um, before the term Kimono,、mm-hmm. they were the, the clothing or that type of kind of like robe mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. called Kosode. Kosode.、Mm-hmm. So、um, it wasn't until 1192、mm-hmm. where people started calling it kimono. Kimono, yep.、Um, I think we mentioned this before in the fashion podcast, but、um, up until the mid 19th century,、mm-hmm. Um, people wore kimonos, but during the Meiji era,、mm-hmm. era um, Western fashion became more common.、Mm-hmm. Actually, there was like a law, right? Yeah. Yeah, like by the law, the Japanese government said、uh, the governors or、mm-hmm. army people、mm-hmm. for the special occasion, they used to wear in kimono, but they banned that by the law. Okay. And then、uh, everybody h a v e to wear Western、uh, clothes, which、okay. is pants and jacket, right? So,、mm-hmm. about 50 years later,、mm-hmm. near the end of the 19th century,、mm-hmm. um, nationalism, pride for Japan、um, started happening more because、mm-hmm. political growth, economic mm-hmm. growth, mm-hmm.、Um, military power.、Mm-hmm. Um, Japan, I think. As a country, wanted to be more like the West,、mm-hmm. but then there was kind of a resurgence of the kimono and people having pride、mm-hmm. and wanting to show off the unique cultural heritage、mm-hmm. of Japan.、Mm-hmm. So it then became more common again. Common, yeah. But nowadays, not so common? I mean, yeah, no. Like, People wear them for special occasions, well,、right? yeah. Weddings, graduation ceremony,、mm-hmm. funerals,、mm-hmm. tea ceremonies.、Mm-hmm. But like day to day, it's day- not, no, really. I mean, for the usual situation,、mm-hmm. people don't wear. Okay. No. Like、um, you mentioned, you never even seen your mom wear a kimono? Yeah, no. I、okay. never seen my mom wearing kimono. Yeah. So that's, that's really interesting because maybe our listeners from the West would think,、mm-hmm. oh, people wear kimonos all the time.、Mm-hmm. Right? It's really no, common. No, no. No. But the, one of the a few reasons why it's not so common anymore、mm-hmm. is because of their cost. Yeah. Right? A decent kimono can cost around 1 million yen, which、mm-hmm. is about like $10,000.、Mm-hmm. And it's very hard to store. Mm-hmm. Like, I know there's、um, s- like dressers made specifically、mm-hmm. to keep kimono. To keep、right? kimono, yeah. And then you have to have space.、Mm-hmm. Then obviously, you have to have uh, good uh, 
closet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like moths can. Yeah. Bugs can. Exactly. Ruin yeah. it. Yeah, because it's ten thousand dollar of uh, crawl, mm-hmm. and if there's a bug bite mm-hmm. or you know any uh, how to say the no stinks, but uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. stinks, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the um, dampness, yeah, right. Yeah. It's a humid country over there, exactly. Um, so that's why I guess they're so expensive and. They're considered like family heirlooms that are passed down mm-hmm. from generation mm-hmm. to generation. Mm-hmm. As well, is kimonos are very hard to put on. Yes, right. Like modern, the younger generation. Like we don't know. Okay. Yeah, I think only a few people know, mm-hmm. or even there's a school. Yes. And you you need to go there, and yeah. you need to learn how to wear. Traditionally, the art of putting on a kimono was passed. Down from your mom. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yep. So let's talk about the components of mm-hmm. a kimono. Mm-hmm. So kimonos are generally made out of silk, silk, but the inner layers and the embroidery mm-hmm. could be made from cotton or mm-hmm. hemp. Mm-hmm. So kimono are actually quite simple, straight seamed garments. Mm-hmm. They're just shaped into like a T mm-hmm. almost, right? Yep. Um, unlike Western garments, mm-hmm. kimono are basically unisex mm-hmm. and unsized. Mm-hmm. They think of it as like a garment to cover the body mm-hmm. rather than maybe um, revealing parts of the body. Mm-hmm. It's meant to just cover it all. Mm-hmm. The beauty comes from the decoration of the surface of the kimono. Mm-hmm. So there's um, obviously super fancy ones where the royalty wear mm-hmm. and it's like 12 layers, 12 mm-hmm. to 20 layers. Mm-hmm. Each layer has a significance, represents something, mm-hmm. each color, mm-hmm. which we'll get to later. And it's also heavy. That's true. It, it gets up to like a 20 kilo almost. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so it's, uh, yeah. You stay seated. Yeah. <laughs> But the standard kimono has now Mm -hmm. like a normal everyday kimono, Mm -hmm. not everyday, but for the common people, Mm -hmm. um, it's like about five or six layers. Yeah. Still a lot. Still a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So because kimonos are hard to clean, Mm -hmm. you have to wear like inner layers, right? Yeah. So let's quickly run down um, the common layers, the Mm -hmm. common components of a Kimono. kimono yeah so first we have tabi tabi mm-hmm. which is um like the foot mm-hmm. shaped sock mm-hmm. yeah um, you can f- fit your toes through right yeah yeah um, and there's like a buckle at the back to fasten it mm-hmm. um the next we have nagajuban mm-hmm. and that's um nagajuban is like a under roll it's like a under, yeah thin linen maybe cotton it's just like an undershirt mm-hmm. and then next we have uh uh hioku. next we have uh date oh, sorry. Jime. Date jime. <laughs> <laughs> date jime. Um, which is a sash it's like we're worn around the waist mm-hmm. just to fasten the nagajuban mm-hmm. and um that is unseen like it will be covered by the kimono mm-hmm. it'll be covered by the obi mm-hmm. And then next we and have then the hioku, yeah. hioku, which is a robe worn under the kimono, mostly for warmth. Mm-hmm. Um, nowadays, only like geishas or brides, mm-hmm. the ones that need to wear all the layers are wear that. Mm-hmm. And then you have the kimono, which is the silk robe. Mm-hmm. And then you have the obi obi which is a wide silk sash Mm -hmm. um really beautiful decorated um and it can be quite long i think the obi is the difficult part of wearing it right yeah so it's like four meters long can be Mm -hmm. um and so you wrap it around your waist Mm -hmm. and it's tied in the back Mm -hmm. but like different style knots Mm -hmm. represent things too right yeah so 
I think that yeah, that's the most difficult part. Mm-hmm. And then next you have the hakama, hakama, mm-hmm. which is similar to like a skirt mm-hmm. or like pants. Mm-hmm. So it's worn over the kimono mm-hmm. at the waist. Mm-hmm. Um, traditionally, it's male clothing, mm-hmm. yeah. but both genders wear it for like graduation mm-hmm. ceremonies or martial arts. Yeah, I was wearing hakama. Uh, for my uh, 20 years anniversary. Okay. Because it's a big thing in Japan. Is that the same thing as like the graduation ceremony? Uh, y- yeah. Yeah. Okay. Graduation, university graduation ceremony. I know even uh, female also wearing hakama. Okay. Yeah. And then we have the um, footwear. Zori. Yep. Zori. Zori. Yeah. Or Geta. Geta. So. Mm-hmm. Both are like the sandals, mm-hmm. but the geta is the wooden ones wooden with one. the two teeth. Yeah. 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 And then you have the last layer is mm-hmm. the uchikake. And that is the outer kimono jacket, mm-hmm. like the super, super decorative, mm-hmm. mostly worn for brides, right? For brides, yeah. Yeah. Um, how you wear it is also very important right? very important there's a meaning yeah. okay so normally people wear kimono it goes from left side over right side for uh sorry yeah left yeah, side left side and over the over right side the right side yeah if you do the right side over the left side and it's for that body so that's how you would dress uh a corpse. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Left side over. Right. Yeah. Um, so because kimonos are generally unsized, mm-hmm. the length of the garment can be altered by drawing up the excess fabric and you tuck it in the obi. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you can adjust the length of it mm-hmm. by that. Yeah. Um, you can also make adjustments by pulling the back collar down mm-hmm. to yeah. expose the nape of the neck mm-hmm. which it's called emon emon yeah and that traditionally or even to this day is seen as like sexy yeah still so yeah. like if you're wearing kimono mm-hmm. and then especially for female mm-hmm. you should have that part that exposed. emon part yeah so like that's the beauty of uh kimono wearing women Okay. Yeah. So is uh in Japan do you guys find other parts like mm-hmm. sexy? Like for example, like in the west, mm-hmm. the back of a woman's neck, I don't know. Maybe do people do consider it mm-hmm. like sexy, but mm-hmm. in general it's, it's Yeah. But I think again, it's because of like how how the kimono looks mm-hmm. and with the uh emon things mm-hmm. it's it makes total beautiful okay yeah so like a lot of uh uh geisha mm-hmm. ladies mm-hmm. they even wear wearing makeup mm-hmm. and if you uh if you be attention her uh, i mean their back neck mm-hmm. and they paint like white for like uh it's some sort of shape okay because that's the beauty okay yeah so it's i think if you're wearing kimono especially if you're female mm-hmm. and it's that it's very important part interesting yeah because they're also everybody tight up hair right okay yeah. no one is like put it hair, hair down, down. uh uh-huh, that's yeah. true i've never seen anyone wearing a kimono with the hair down yeah uh-huh yeah uh-huh. Okay. Because that's also wabi sabi, mm-hmm. I would say. Okay. Yeah. And what's wabi sabi again? Wabi sabi is like a white and black. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's very specific, like yes or no type. Okay. Yeah. So like kimono, like you don't wear kimono, like, like everything. Just casually. Casually. Yeah. And then like lose. If you wear a kimono, do it properly. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And that's why your body position is also important. 
Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes. You it kind of forces you to have a good straight exactly. posture, right? Yeah. Again, like it's total co- coordinate, mm-hmm. including you. Okay. Yeah. So um, another functional thing mm-hmm. about kimonos is because it's like wrapped around your body. Mm-hmm. Um, it allows for easy movement, especially mm-hmm. when. You live in a culture where a lot of activities are done mm-hmm. sitting on the floor, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, also, because of the different layers you can mm-hmm. add on, it's mm-hmm. good. It's well suited for Japan's climate. It mm-hmm. gets super hot and super cold, yep. right? Yep. Uh, another interesting tidbit of information is um, what they call swinging sleeves. Mm-hmm. Furisode. Furisode. Mm-hmm. So. If you are an unmarried woman mm-hmm. or girls, mm-hmm. you would have loose, long sleeves. Loose, yeah. It's like long one. Okay. Yeah. Um, and normally, if you're a young woman, you would wear bright color kimono, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, especially on like your graduation ceremony mm-hmm. or coming of age day. Mm-hmm. Um, and... It's just supposed to be more beautiful to... With the longer sleeve. Uh-huh. Because, you know, it looks more... Flowy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's to attract a partner, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But once married, mm-hmm. women will kind of hem it up. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's called... Tomesode. Tomesode mm-hmm. sleeves. Yeah. So it's shorter. Shorter. And it's like cuffed to the wrist. Mm-hmm. Which means that you don't need to <laughs> I mean, attract yeah, another like, partner. Mm-hmm. You're already married. Mm-hmm. It's a, like old history. I mean, yeah, this old is all culture, tradition. Right? Yeah. yeah, I think what we're saying now is yeah, not modern at all. Mm-hmm. It's very no, no, no. like male, female, traditional. Mm-hmm. But kimonos, mm-hmm. that's what mm-hmm. it is, right? And um, it's also functional because now exactly you're married. Now you gotta kind of do household work mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and with the long functional. sleeve it's so difficult to do it so mm-hmm. i think back then uh the people have kimono with the long sleeve mm-hmm. and after female get married and then they fix that okay the slo- uh the sleeve the sleeve yeah uh-huh. and they normally cut mm-hmm. but in japanese kiru it's not the good word for Mm -hmm. somebody married and basically yeah kiru is not a good word because like you cut yeah right it it can symbolize cutting life yeah cutting your marriage yeah so instead of uh kiri sode Mm -hmm. they say tome sode interesting yeah like once you get deep into the japanese language like the words they choose they're very it's it's all about the meaning, right? Mm-hmm. The kanji mm-hmm. they choose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's a, so there's a fortune or no, or it's luck or yes. unluck. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's really matter. Yeah. yeah. Symbolism really matters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Again, all this is cultural. It's yes. Japanese. It's cultural. Yeah. Um, you might argue archaic, but it's what it is, right? It, I mean, we can say it was it was right? yeah, yeah, yeah 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 exactly um so again people consider like the cut of the kimono is mm-hmm. simple mm-hmm. but the beauty comes from the significance of the patterns yep. of the design yeah so let's get into some of the um, symbolism and common designs and motifs mm-hmm. so i think in general in Japan, they take a lot of beauty from nature, mm-hmm. right? A lot of the art is like you, things that you can find in nature, yeah. right? Like yeah. our pattern we have yeah, like here. We have here today. Flowers, butterflies, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So common uh, designs are birds, animals, mm-hmm. butterflies, mm-hmm. dragonflies, mm-hmm. trees, mm-hmm. mountains. Um, for example, the crane. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a really common kimono mm-hmm. design mm-hmm. to have a crane on it, mm-hmm. and it's because it's because it's they believe that cranes live for a thousand years, mm-hmm. and oh yeah, mm-hmm. 
and they what's that mean? Tsuru is cr- crane. Crane. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Um, crane they live 4,000 years they mm-hmm. inhabit the land of the immortals mm-hmm. and um, so because they live for a thousand years it's a symbol for longevity mm-hmm. and good fortune mm-hmm. I feel like everything in Asia it's like oh it means good fortune yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and flowers right like we said before Japan really honors the seasons mm-hmm. so the design of the kimono can represent the seasons as mm-hmm. well. So mm-hmm. flowers, cherry blossom, I guess mm-hmm. that represents springtime. Springtime, yeah. Uh, chrysanthemums. Chrysanthemum. I'm assuming yeah, springtime. Su- spring, summer. Yeah, spring, summer. Um, maple leaves, the changing of color. Mm-hmm. Like fall time. Fall, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, a really popular, famous art motif mm-hmm. is... Um, The Three Friends of Winter. Mm-hmm. In Japanese, that's... Shochikubai. Okay. Which is pine, mm-hmm. bamboo, mm-hmm. and plum flower. Okay. Yeah. So, the significance of that is longevity for mm-hmm. the pine, mm-hmm. perseverance for the bamboo, and mm-hmm. renewal for the plum. The reason mm-hmm. why is because a pine tree is evergreen. Mm-hmm. Right? It lives for many years, so mm-hmm. longevity. Bamboo, very strong. Strong. It Straight. blows in the wind. It mm-hmm. bends, but doesn't break. Mm-hmm. So, perseverance. Mm-hmm. And then, ume, mm-hmm. plum. It's the first tree to, to blossom every blossom. year. Yeah. So, after winter. After winter, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, renewal, growth. Mm-hmm. Um, so, apparently, the plum design, plum blossoms, is a very common design because. Uh, especially to be worn in the winter mm-hmm. because you're looking forward to spring. Mm-hmm. Man, it's all symbolism. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's all meaning. Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. So continue with that. We have the different colors. Yep. More meaning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so researching the different colors and the meanings, very interesting that the Japanese believe that the plant or the flower that is used to dye clothing mm-hmm. that also um, the meaning of that transfers over to the clothing so mm-hmm. for example the color blue um, it's from indigo mm-hmm. the plant um, and they use indigo to treat bug bites and stings mm-hmm. so if you wear a blue fabric dyed with by indigo mm-hmm. indigo Um, mm-hmm. It's thought that when you wear it, it's going to repel snakes and insects. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So interesting, right? <laughs> <laughs> so let's quickly uh, go through the, the color? colors. Yep. So we have black. When mm-hmm. would you wear a black kimono? Black one, uh, mostly for funeral. Okay. Yeah. Because I think every word. It's mostly black, no? I think black so, suit yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, right. And I mean, like, Japanese people wear black suit. But at the funeral ceremony, I saw uh, more female people wearing kimono than uh, male people wearing hakama okay. at the funeral Interesting. ceremony. Yeah. And black is supposed to represent wisdom. Mm-hmm. And then we have white. Mm-hmm. And when do, would you wear a white kimono? White kimono is normally a uh, wedding, but mm-hmm. for bride. Okay. White, white is, has to be only for bride. Uh-huh. So if you attend to your friend's wedding in Japan mm-hmm. and you want to wear in kimono, mm-hmm. don't choose white because <laughs> white is only for the bride. Yes. You it's, can choose anything else. Exactly. Yeah. Or the kimono is i think we mentioned it before for the the dead uh the corpse yeah. corpse yeah okay yeah so interesting okay. yeah and um i guess white with any culture it seems like it represents purity purity yeah right um red mm-hmm. worn commonly worn for like young females mm-hmm. um because it signifies glamour allure mm-hmm. 
um, blue, mm -hmm. luck. Mm -hmm. I guess you have to be lucky to avoid snakes mm -hmm. <laughs> and scorpions yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Uh, green, vitality, mm -hmm. energy. Mm -hmm. um, silver and gold, it's um, prestige. Mm -hmm. So I guess royalty or mm -hmm. super rich people. Super <laughs> rich people. Uh -huh. Like Japanese people don't really wear or have gold and silver uh, clothes okay yeah and then we have pink which uh represents youth and good health mm -hmm. we have brown mm -hmm. um represents strength and durability mm -hmm. and purple for love mm. so um if you are traveling through japan mm -hmm. um in the tourist tur touristic spots mm -hmm. um there'll be like kimono rental mm -hmm. shops right yeah like for sure in kyoto yeah you'll see yeah. signs everywhere yeah. and then you'll sign like you'll see tourists wearing kimonos mm -hmm. visiting the temples and shrines mm -hmm. um so to rent a kimono at one of those shops it's mm -hmm. about 40 bucks mm -hmm. for and you can rent it for like six or eight hours mm -hmm. like a day yes yeah. right. just to take all your ig photos mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um but like super fancy ones like the proper ones worn for like for ceremony or some event mm -hmm. yeah i guess the ones that yeah the japanese <laughs> yeah the japanese like for um, 20 years anniversary okay important mm -hmm. dates for mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. um you can rent the nicer ones yeah like uh -huh. i would say like more actual okay material yes and actual layers yes yes mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the um, the quality and the construction of it matters, right? Mm -hmm. Like the ones that you can rent for 40 bucks is like the casual. Casual. Not and it makes sense, right? Because yeah. like those shops, like they have to rent like a bunch of kimono to a bunch of different type of people. Mm -hmm. They never know mm -hmm. what they're going to do. Exactly. What happens if they drink something, they drink coffee and then <laughs> drip, oh <God>. right? <laughs> it's And they rent the... Uh, like a ten thousand dollar kimono to them and then mm -hmm. they fuck <laughs> you spilled starbucks all over it yeah <laughs> yeah and those ones um at least it's like two hundred dollars cheapest rent, right? yeah that's a cheapest i remember rent. for my uh 20 years anniversary yes. my parents actually saved money for me uh -huh. to lend the anniversary okay so because definitely it's, it's not cheap yeah, yeah yeah i know obviously my parents can afford to buy it mm -hmm. so yeah but cool. to lend it my parents still need to save the money wow okay yeah i didn't ask how much but mm -hmm. i'll say like over Expensive. 500 yeah. bucks okay yeah. and at these places they can also do your hair up hair as you. well yeah so um the male kimono mm -hmm. do you guys wear obi as well yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so when you, when you rented your kimono mm -hmm. for your ceremony, mm -hmm. did they put it on for you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So everything they can do for you. Okay. So what you do is like, just be naked. I mean, like just underwear mm -hmm. and then let them do for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was that a fun experience? Uh, yeah, it was like, well, almost like 20 <laughs> years ago, but yeah, it was good experience. Mm -hmm. Obviously. I mean, that was my first time and then last time <laughs> and then mine was hakama actually okay so, yeah what about you never. you visit in japan yeah. and i thought you guys were no in no Kyoto. i would never um, i don't know yeah i thought better yeah you veronica wanted really it. wanted to yeah but i did not really want her to because i found it a little bit racist <laughs> i see i see a little bit like appropriation mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but she argued it it's appreciation <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah but it's pricey and i don't know i didn't um i wasn't okay with it okay. i don't know now how i would feel yeah um but i mean yeah we're talking about kimono today but if you want to go cheaper or lighter easier mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is only for summertime, but there's a yukata. Yes. Yeah. 
and it's just that one layer. One right? layer. Yeah. Yeah. So still beautiful. Still right? beautiful. Yeah. Not as intricately patterned. Mm-hmm. But, but to me, I think it's better because like you don't want to wear like five different layer of mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know clothes or even like materials on like you. fancy fancy ones, yeah. right? Yeah. And um, if you want to buy mm-hmm. a kimono, mm-hmm. um, you can go to vintage stores. There's a lot of vintage stores in Japan, mm-hmm. and a lot of vintage stores specialize in selling. Um, old kimonos yes yeah. old kimonos like used kimonos exactly yeah so the price is rather affordable compared to what it really costs mm-hmm. brand new mm-hmm. so like mm-hmm. when we went last time um we bought one but actually thinking back at it we didn't buy the kimono we bought a uchikake okay yeah the outer layer yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah we bought like a wedding one mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um it was still like 700 bucks Hmm. but um yeah it it's pretty long it's like really long and yeah the bottom part is like weighed mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and there was like a protective plastic oh really sh- sheeting on the bottom because or else it's gonna drag oh, on I the see. floor uh-huh. on the ground uh-huh. but um yeah we we just hang it up in our bedroom now okay so, so she never wear no 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 it was just the outer layer and yeah yeah <laughs> But it's yeah we we bought it purely just for like decoration mm-hmm, in the house, mm-hmm. which I think I know, is really like, beautiful to have. Yeah, and I know like some of my friends like they have that they bought from Japan and then keep on the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, again, cool. like like I don't think somebody who listening right now you can see, but now we put one. Uh, how to say this? Like mm, a pattern. Pattern. Uh, yeah. yeah, and this is from uh, one of old uh, kimono shop in Nagoya. Mm-hmm. And then the daughter took over. It's like 300 years old uh, kimono shop. Okay. So daughter took over and then she made it like a good design. So it's like That's a beautiful. modern with old design together. Yes. So like to, to put on your wall, it's already beautiful, right? Exactly. The design is already art, like art exactly so, yeah yeah we got a a couple of obis as well mm-hmm. because it's just so beautiful right mm-hmm. the embroidery mm-hmm. um and we use it as a table runner is that okay actually yeah like, yeah. for sure yeah 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 i like, think it's better going to you know throw away in a garbage than somebody can use for something else right now they i know like people also make uh the cup coaster oh with with from that material oh okay yeah that's true because yeah. now that i think of it um in the tourist spots you can buy like little coin purses mm-hmm. made with mm-hmm. uh like used um the fabric. kimono fabric yeah 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 because yeah. yeah. again like they still want to use it and mm-hmm. it's beautiful too so. yeah yeah um i think that does it for our kimono mm-hmm. um topic for today mm-hmm there was so much information it's all yeah honestly this could be like over one day topic yeah. if we need to explain everything yeah so, we we cut it down a lot a lot yeah yeah we didn't want to bore you guys yeah so <laughs> obviously if you guys want to know more and then you can always research or we can have like next episode to yeah, let us know if you're yeah, interested deep into kimono but exactly for for today we just touch yeah about history and then what is the design and i mean we plan to do this podcast for at least a couple years right so exactly yeah two podcasts a week that's 100 episodes a year Mm -hmm. we're gonna definitely revisit yeah many episodes yeah right yeah um so this brings us to our street level japanese segment hi um, again, street level Japanese is um, a part of the podcast podcast where we uh, want to introduce slang, mm-hmm. street level, mm-hmm. informal Japanese. Mm-hmm. So today's word is shareteru, shareteru, mm-hmm. which means trendy or stylish, mm-hmm. right? Um, what's the formal version of it? Oshare, oshare. Mm-hmm. So informal. Shareteru. Shareteru. Mm-hmm. Formal. 
Oshare. Oshare. Mm -hmm. So let's give our listeners a couple of uh, examples. So you go to a really nice, fancy, expensive restaurant,、mm -hmm. um, beautiful interior, nice furniture,、um, beautifully plated, small little bits of food.、Mm -hmm. You go inside and you would、mm -hmm. say, Wow, this restaurant is shared. Nice.、Mm -hmm. um, or、um, you know someone who is really up to date in fashion trends.、Mm -hmm. They dress really nicely.、Mm -hmm. You would describe them as. It's shared. Nice.、Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't use shared in like a business work setting. Never. Okay. No. So,、yeah. amongst friends, casually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. So,、um, that does it for today's episode.、Mm -hmm. Again,、um, thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you for all the comments that、uh, we have received so far through our social media.、Mm -hmm. It really、um, makes us happy. And happy. Give us more motivation. To, to, yeah, to, to create、continue. more content. Yeah. yeah.、Um, it feels nice that.、Mm -hmm. <laughs> People want to listen to us. Yep. Right. Yep.、Um, how, again, how we started this podcast is that Ruski and I would meet up quite often and、mm -hmm. somehow our conversations would end up talking、this. about Japan.、Mm -hmm. And、um, we would talk about things that we would realize that it's so Japanese,、mm -hmm. like it's uniquely Japanese.、Mm -hmm. And then eventually we just thought we should just record ourselves talking. Yep, yep. And, and then, then to, to give other people more information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So,、um, yeah, from the point of view of a Japanese person、mm -hmm. and a point of view from a foreigner who's lived in Japan、mm -hmm. and、um, is a self proclaimed Japanophile.、Mm -hmm. So,、um, I'm glad, we are glad that you guys are enjoying our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so, Um, if you do continue to listen, please subscribe,、mm -hmm. uh, rate, like, do all that good stuff on、mm -hmm. all the social media platforms.、Mm -hmm. um, you can click, click on our link tree、mm -hmm. and、uh, follow all our links there.、Mm -hmm. uh, onegaishimasu. <laughs> um, it feels weird to keep asking this, but I mean, every. Everybody does. Right,、so. it's quite yeah. normal. Yeah, I mean,、But、we do it at the end, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah.、Um, but yeah,、uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. Arigato. Bye bye. Matane. Bye bye.